Okay. Hi, Karen. This is Miriam Kramer with Space.com. Thanks so much for chatting with me today. Absolutely. Um, so I'm curious, what has it been like adjusting to life back on Earth and seeing your family again? Um, have you experienced any kind of funny re-adaptation side effects like dropping things or breaking glasses or something <laughs> like that? I really haven't had any anything like that. The, the first 24 hours or so, it was just difficult to walk without getting nauseous. But um, but re-adaptation came very quickly after that, once I got back to Houston. And I haven't experienced, I know even after my shuttle flight, I noticed um, one of the first nights when I was lying in my bed, I felt like I was on the wall hanging, looking down at the dresser that was on the wall. And I haven't experienced any of that. Um, the closest thing would be throwing a cardboard box to the trash and it only making it halfway. And, you know, that might have something to do with the little effort that's required to throw something in space. or it, might be that I'm just not very good at, at throwing something into a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, and you have shared some really great stories about your, uh, your crafting in outer space. Um, so I'm wondering, what are some of the challenges of doing, um, of, of sewing and doing other crafts uh, uh, in the space station, on the space station? I think the, the biggest thing is not being able to, to, to lay things down, lay things out. And that's true for cutting out. Um, it's true for designing, especially quilts, where you want to see how the pieces fit together. And, and then also, um, I think if I had more supplies, it would have been easier, but I didn't have pins, and that made it hard also. And an iron, um, without an iron, and that's something that could be overcome if for some reason it was decided that we need to sew a lot more in space. Those, those kind of problem, challenges could be overcome by having the supplies there. But really being able to, to lay things flat on a surface um, makes it very hard not being able to do that. Right. Um, and you took some really incredible photos of Earth from space and shared them on social media. Um, do you have a favorite view or something that you really love taking pictures of? Uh, everything. I love taking pictures of everything. But in particular, clouds were always fascinating. And, and maybe it's because they were always different. Um, other portions of the Earth, you, you know, you travel over and you see it over and over. You see a lake, you see a river, you see mountains. But the clouds were different every time you traveled over. And particularly storm clouds were spectacular, especially in low light. And, and the various pictures you'd see in the cloud were just incredible. And the, the cloud formations, um, just very beautiful. Yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, like you said before, you were, you're very active on social media. And particularly today, on the 15th anniversary of the launch of the first space station module, um, why do you think it's important to give uh, people on Earth a glimpse of what life is like in space? Well, it's an, it's an opportunity that that we get and not everybody gets and that's that's really not fair because it's so beautiful and 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 it's just something that I think everybody should get the chance to see but not only that we're doing amazing things with space travel and studying and 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 reaching uh towards boundaries that um that haven't been reached and I think to get it's it's important to get people interested in that and you know we try to do that and and hopefully we do and hopefully um, it, to, to me, space, space travel is just something that's exciting, just naturally to me exciting and important. And I, don't, I know not everybody feels that way. And so if we can do things to get other people excited about it, um, I would like to do that. That's great. And we actually have a, a couple of questions from readers that are excited about space travel. <laughs> um, so Mike Duncan is wondering uh, what you felt when you took your first breath of fresh air after landing back on Earth. It felt very good, and in particular because the air was cold. Being November in Kazakhstan, it was it was cold, and I was very hot, you know, coming through entry. Hot because it was hot in the capsule, but also hot because I wasn't feeling very good. And anybody that's that's gotten motion sickness or anything, you know, you know that you start sweating, and and so that cold air felt so good, and and uh, and it just smelled good. It's just a fresh, cold, um, cold breeze was was really nice. Great. Right. And quite a few of our readers are wanting to know what uh, you're planning on doing next. Well, it, I haven't really thought long term, really. Um, short term, I continue get, continue getting readapted to gravity, um, um, readapting to being back with my family, getting back into our daily routine that I loved so much before I left. And and then there'll be debriefs. We'll be uh, all meeting with um, all the engineers and scientists that worked on the various aspects of my flight and debriefing for future flights to try and improve things. And then um, 
you know, then I'll start probably doing some travel and talking to folks about my the adventure I've had. And after that, I'm not sure, honestly, um, what I'll do. I'll probably be thinking about it here as I'm getting to the point where I really need to decide. That's great. Thanks so much. Thank you.